Superstorm Sandy has made landfall this morning along the coast of southern New Jersey. Five people already reported dead in New York. And that is why the president is saying, listen to what the administration is telling you. When you are told to evacuate, you need to evacuate. Post-tropical storm Sandy is one of the biggest ever to hit the United States and has lashed the densely populated East Coast area, shutting down transportation, forcing evacuations in flood-prone areas. More than a million people already without power and millions more could lose electricity in the hours to come. New York and other cities closed their transit systems in schools, ordering mass evacuations from low-lying areas ahead of the storm surge that could reach as much as 11 feet high waves that could lash the shore. And of course, winds more than 150 to 200 kilometers an hour. Sandy is moving closer to converging with two cold weather systems to form a fearsome superstorm of snow, of rain and wind. Forecasters warned of a 20-foot wave bashing into Chicago lakefront and up to three feet of snow in West Virginia. Well, it's only going to be a first. I'm standing around uh, 20 miles from Washington, D.C. And if I just move on my umbrella down, you would have to All right, President Obama already has declared emergencies in Massachusetts, in Connecticut, in Rhode Island, in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, authorizing federal relief work to begin well ahead of time. He promised that the government would respond, and I quote, respond big and respond fast after the storm hits. Obviously, the U.S. administration has come under fire for previous instances of not really doing as much as possible uh, in the aftermath of a hurricane or a storm system. This time, obviously, Obama doesn't want to make any mistakes. We are certain that this is going to be a slow-moving process through a wide swath of the country, and millions of people are going to be affected. So the most important message that I have for the public right now is please listen to what your state and local officials are saying. Uh, when they tell you to evacuate, you need to evacuate. Now, that's, of course, a warning that most Americans should be listening to at this point of time because this is not the usual storm that they can weather out. This is obviously a massive hurricane. Now, technically speaking, although Sandy is not a hurricane anymore, it's a post-tropical super storm. But it still is packing a hurricane-sized punch as it slams into New Jersey coast on Monday evening American time. Now, Sandy whipped torrents of water over the streets of Atlantic City stretching for blocks inland and ripping up part of vacation spots fabled boardwork. It's uh, spawned high winds and torrential rains from North Carolina to Maine and knocked out power to nearly 3 million customers across 11 states in the District of Columbia. It was also blamed for the first confirmed U.S. death on Monday night when a man was killed by a tree that fell on his house in New York Row of Queens. The storm hit land near Atlantic City with wind speeds of 80 miles per hour at windfall down to about 90 miles per hour clocked after hurricane force winds stretched from Cape Cod to the Virginia coast and it swept ashore. The storm surge setting new high water records for lower Manhattan and swamping beach fronts on both sides of Long Island. All right, Rukmini now joins us uh, for more on this. Rukmini, just break down really what is happening there in simplistic terms. Uh, what is the threat perception at this point of time? And what part of the danger is over? When do we see the worst really come in? From what we understand, the worst is yet to happen. Pennsylvania is really bracing for the worst uh, of Hurricane Sandy. Pennsylvania is taking all precautions. You know, 1,600 uh, uh, troops from the National Guard have been called in to brace for any emergencies. A quick update. We know for a fact now that uh, confirmed fatalities have gone up 
to 10. Mm. Uh, there have been fatalities in New York, Connecticut and Virginia. This, despite all the precautions being taken uh, by the government, people being asked to evacuate. But as you can see from your visuals, Akash, a lot of people are not taking those warnings very seriously. Mm. A lot of people want to track that storm. They want to brace uh, that so storm and see what it feels like. Uh, there have been uh, repeated appeals from President Barack Obama saying that uh, people should evacuate as and when uh, their state tells them to do so. Remember, uh, uh, Sandy is no longer a hurricane. She's a post-tropical storm, as you rightly pointed out. It really is not even as high in intensity as Hurricane Katrina was, Akash. But what is really important is Sandy is growing. Uh, in expanse uh, as she progresses and uh, with two winter fronts going to merge with Sandy mm. it's going to become far more lethal and strong and uh, the concern is that it is going to get uh, far more destructive as it progresses towards Pennsylvania and the rest of the East Coast uh, already uh, getting information of houses being toppled over uh, massive power cuts Akash in the US over 2 million people have already been plunged into darkness mm. as a result of uh, the New York State uh, you know, uh, pulling the plug on uh, power uh, as, as an emergency situation uh, just to avoid any extenuating circumstances uh, as a result of the storm. So really, uh, the situation is going to get worse before it gets better. Pennsylvania is really bracing the worst uh, this evening, Akash. And uh, Rukmani, you know, staying with uh, the story as far as what happens after uh, this entire episode is over. Hurricane Katrina perhaps is still fresh in the minds of U.S. citizens and the fact that the administration was too tardy uh, in its rescue efforts and that's why perhaps uh, Barack Obama doesn't want to take any risk. He says we will act fast and we'll act big because this is very crucial really. This comes at the worst point of time just before the elections. This does come at the worst point in time as you correctly pointed out they had to both Obama and Romney had to really cut short their campaign in uh, light of this particular storm. Uh, as we were saying Hurricane Katrina was far, most in, uh, far more intense in its destruction the strength of the hurricane itself. Hmm. This post tropical storm Akash but is very expansive. It's going to extend to 800 miles. It's already packing wind speeds of 90 miles per hour and it's only expected to grow stronger. So it's really going to devastate far more in terms of area than Hurricane Katrina and that is something that the American authorities are really worried about. And, and you know for, for all the fact that they have so advanced early warning systems, they have made the announcement, the president himself involved in all of this, but it seems the biggest problem is getting the people out. It's not really, in India we generally say that no adequate warning was given. Here the warning is there. Right. People are just not wanting to move out. Why is that? Because they're too right. used to storm systems. They think that they can weather this one out as well. Well, Akash, as you rightly pointed out, a large number of Americans are used to storm systems. They're used to tornadoes. They're used to typhoons. But in many cases, I've been reading eyewitness accounts and, you know, people tweeting and talking about their experiences uh, and even putting up amateur videos of the storm all over the web. A lot of them say, you know, they're not willing to leave because uh, their, their threat perception isn't as high, perhaps, as what uh, uh, the government is saying. There are people who are saying we are at a higher level, we are on higher ground and we will not leave. There are others who do not want to leave because they have uh, ailing loved ones who cannot be moved. Mm. There are some who have businesses in the area and therefore they do not want to leave. So people have their own reasons for not leaving. Mm. But uh, Obama has been saying repeatedly that people must leave. In fact, uh, there is the National Response Coordination Center which has put in place the do's and don'ts. They have been preparing for this days in advance, Akash, and yet there are people who have not left. As I've been saying, our fatalities have already mounted to 10 and it's just a matter of us. Let's not forget that Sandy has already claimed 16 lives in the Caribbean as she was making her way to the US. 51 people have already died in Haiti and the most devastating impact of Sandy uh, is expected as she crashed into uh, New Jersey uh, mm. at about uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time today. And like I said, uh, Pennsylvania is bracing for the worst this evening. What is what 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 really are the people doing at this point of time? What sort of provisions really have they made? Because it seems that very much like here, they don't want to trust the government. They want to take matters into their own hands. So how is it that people are actually uh, uh, weathering this whole thing? We have sitting at home, watching television, stocking up their kitchen with perhaps grocery worth of two weeks of supply. That's true, Akash. In fact, I have to say, uh, regardless of what the response was to Hurricane Katrina, this time around, Americans seemed far more prepared hmm. in terms of how to deal with the storm. But let's remember, we are talking about nature here. And no matter how prepared you are, no matter how rich a nation you are, 
no matter how strong a nation you are i mean man is powerless against nature's fury and there's only so much that can be done you can only prepare yourself and hope for the best and really be prepared for the worst uh, the national response coordination center has been issuing guidelines time and again telling people to stock up on groceries uh, asking them to move to higher ground if they are on low lying areas asking people that are okay. most vulnerable to evacuate if necessary okay rukmini just hang in there for a second marok also joins us from north virginia to give us our latest input marok just take us through exactly what is happening at this point of time what is the state of evacuation and how is the storm system doing as of now uh well akash first thing first as far as uh, the uh, hurricane sandy as it's been called has now been uh, reduced to what is being called a post cyclone post tropical cyclone by the national hurricane center here that's first uh, uh, the wind speed which is one of the crucial factors along the east coast which has been reiterated again and again by all the agencies uh, which are responsible uh, for the entire evacuation process are saying that the wind speeds are about 85 miles per hour uh which is uh, which is comparatively higher than what it was earlier in the day at this point most of the evacuation processes had been completed uh, what the governor in uh, new york as well as mayor has been saying because new york and southern new jersey are the ones which have been most hit by hurricane sandy uh, what they are saying at this point is that as far as the agencies are concerned the evacuation process is uh, um, following all the notifications that had been registered and had been put up the announcements that had been made uh, as far as that is concerned because it's night time right now it's 5 uh, pm uh, eastern time uh, so that evacuation mm-hmm. process is over and uh, statements have been made over and ag- uh, over again that whoever is out uh, closer to the sea coast because it's the sea coast that has been hit the hardest should move to higher ground so that's okay. one secondly in terms of um, uh, let me go through uh, the main uh, the, uh, sectors which have been hit uh, starting with airlines uh, all uh, all flights across the eastern sea coast especially new york which uh, caters to about one quarter of all the air traffic in the united states all uh, flights have been cancelled this stays uh, till about uh, tuesday mm-hmm. tuesday evening even though we're getting some reports that perhaps the washington air, airport might be open post 10 am but there is no confirmation on that secondly as far as the metro services across six states such as philadelphia new jersey boston new york and um, uh, baltimore as well as washington dc all metro transit um, uh, lines have been shut down in most areas the bus services have also been severely affected Uh, this is close to 250,000 plus people that have been evacuated at this point we're getting reports from almost across uh, the eastern sea coast uh, that uh, there are some uh, places which have been turned into ghost cities uh, following the evacuation process there are reports uh, this is according to associated press that about di- uh, 10 people have died which could be um, uh, related directly uh, to hurricane sandy but we haven't got a confirmation from the government so that's as far as the evacuation process is concerned in the second part that we are looking at here in the united states considering it's about less than 7 days to go for the election is how the presidential campaign is being affected mm-hmm. now on the one hand we have president barack obama who is supposed to be in uh, in florida uh, because that's a state that goes to polls early uh, in the sense they have a system here where is voting early as well he was in florida but he cut short his visit uh, early this morning uh, this is still monday night here he's back at the white house he's looking at all the operations the entire evacuation process here because there are questions being raised about whether this hurricane is actually going to pass in the presidency so he's not taking any chances on the other hand we have the republicans and Mitt Romney who's their candidate he's also making mm. sure that he's uh, staying away from the campaign trail and concentrating on what he calls is a, a time of crisis is when the national leadership needs to come together akash And and very quickly, Maruk. Also, lessons being learned from the past or not? Because had Hurricane Katrina, the U.S. administration was uh, blatantly exposed because they did far too little. This time, Obama making a very important statement: "We'll react fast. We'll react big." Obviously, he doesn't want to risk it this time around. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I think you put it very well because uh, that's what is being seen. A, um, uh, perhaps lessons uh, learned from uh, Hurricane Katrina, and B, this is an extremely crucial time. any any decision that is made at this point which goes against uh, what is being seen as crisis control or control management uh, is going to go against uh, president obama in a, in a time which is perhaps as crucial it's not a storm uh, uh, just at any other time it's a storm that comes right before the election so president obama will have to 
uh, watch each of the steps and he's perhaps doing that uh, thing here right at the um, uh, you know at the white house instead of going on campaign trail and making sure that he's directly involved in each and every part of the evacuation process and every other contingency plan um, uh, related to hurricane sandy Okay, Baruch, we'll keep coming back to you to get the very latest, but these pictures obviously speaking volumes about the kind of devastation that America is looking at at this point of time. It's just the beginning. It's just the storm touching really the eastern coast. We have to wait uh, for the next few hours to understand what is really uh, the full uh, damage of this. But yes, uh, Obama already preparing for the post uh, storm system and of course the National Guard also being deployed. It remains to be seen exactly what really uh, is at the end of the day. What sort of damage are we looking at?